How do you learn riffs, chord progressions, strumming, picking, all of these things that you need to be a very good rhythm guitarist, how do you learn them twice as fast, three times as fast, four or five or 10 times as fast? It of course depends on how much you're doing what I'm going to talk about already. Um, or if you're not doing any of it, which means that you can really boost your progress here. What most people do when they learn any chord progression, any riff, anything really, is that they say, okay, we got this thing uh, that I wanna learn. I wanna learn this riff that I was just playing here. And then we start learning it. We start playing it from start to end, which is the most ineffective way of learning anything by far. And that's why we can optimize the process somewhat if we do the following. Let's say you wanna learn a, a, a thing like this. I've already, just those, that, that little beginning there, involved hammer-ons and pull-offs. It involved timing and rhythm. Da, ba, da, 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 right? And then I start picking with, you know, I start picking arpeggios with my pick and alternate picking. So I hammer-ons and pull-offs, alternate picking uh, on multiple strings back and forth, and a chord structure right here that I then have a little variation to. So we, we're just moving like half a second into it and we're already taking on multiple th things at one time. What's wrong with that? Well, the thing that's wrong with that is that you, there's a reason why it's called focus. Focus is singular. And if you wanna learn anything, learning means focus. Learning means having a singular focus on one thing. If you have, if you're trying to learn a thing like this and play it over and over again and just, you know, p pull down the tempo so it's very slow and go. If that's what you do, then you're still focused on a lot of things over and over, you know, in a little st a string, a little sequence of different techniques, different challenges, and two hands at once. You can only look at one hand. You can only have a conscious focus on one thing at a time, which makes the normal learning process that most people go through extremely slow. And that's why they never amount above good because just go getting to good with anything seems like a struggle, like incredibly. But it's also the most intuitive way because we're controlled by our monkey brain, which says, okay, there's a lot to learn here. Let's take on a lot then. Makes sense, that's monkey logic. What you wanna do is that you wanna take each and everything like say the first, and then you wanna loop it like an insane person. You wanna use a metronome if that's applicable. You wanna sit down in front of the TV. You wanna follow the two-step method of first learning it so you're relatively comfortable with it and can start looking at the TV or YouTube or educational videos, whatever you wanna watch. It doesn't have to be anything stupid. Uh, you can learn as you practice and then you loop it. Once you've got this to the level of beyond good, where it feels comfortable to play, you go, you take the next step. So you learn the first thing, you loop it, right? You loop it, loop it, loop it, and you might wanna spend, if you're a complete beginner, you can learn something to the level of absolute incredible if you do this. Instead of hacking away at the lick, the riff, whatever, going from the start to the, uh, from the beginning to the end over and over again, you can start taking just a little bit of it and then loop it. Like, and use the two-step method of first focusing on it until it, you can play it well and then sit down in the, in the couch, the sofa, and then start just looping it over and over and over again. Thousands of times, you can do that in a couple of hours uh, in front of the TV. And then after a, any given period of time where one person has been practicing it like, you know, very slowly, all of it from beginning to end, and you've been looping it, you'll be able to play it at such a high level that it's just like, wow, you have so much talent because you can really play it for once, right? For one. Ah, uh, and he's just, he's still like, sounds like a beginner because he has no amount of mastery because the brain is trying to learn seven things at once in one sequence. And you've been taking, pulling out, okay. That's one, two, three, four. And you wanna focus on each one of the one, two, three, four, one, two, do, do, ba, do, 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 da. Now you have a pattern in. And it's one thing in the brain. So, what do you do? You take that little part, then you take the next. You can go on and say. 
and, and build a bridge to the next note, but then you want to skip the first thing, right? You want to skip the first, the second part of the process here. And don't practice that anymore. Take it to the level and then skip it. And then say, okay, okay, that's the next note. And then I would go and I would practice that. And if you're a complete beginner, you need to practice both the, the alternate picking of these three notes, right? So you want to focus on that, on focus on your, on your right hand. Okay, got that up to speed now. Been doing this for two hours. Okay, I can watch the TV now. Okay, introduce the second thing. Introduce the notes over here. Because now I can focus on this, because now this is relatively unconscious, right? Over and over again, obsessively. This doesn't look normal when you're practicing in this way, because nobody is. Right, okay, so. Then you, you take the third step, you start integrating the two with each other. You have, right? And that's the third step. You can't just do that. Just because you know A and B doesn't mean that you know going in between them. That's something you have to practice. It takes a lot less time than learning A and B, but you still have to practice it. And just as an example here, Person number one who practiced the whole thing from beginning to end is now, perhaps after a week of practicing, able to play the whole thing and sound like a complete amateur when he does so, or she does so. You have been spending a week going, so you can do, right? You play something like a pro, and it's so much more satisfying to do that. And you've just elevated yourself to a totally other level, but few people have the patience to just stay with it. It feels really awesome still when I play these simple notes. It's just, it's just a really cool feeling because there's mastery there instead of staying at mediocre all the time. And when this person A, who practices it over and over again, when he gets to a level where he can play it, he loses interest in it. It's boring now. And so he moves on to something else without actually being able to play the first thing at a very high level. So he'll just stay mediocre there, take the next thing, stay mediocre with that, and years and years go by and he never elevates himself beyond that. You don't want to do that. You don't want to make that mistake. So by, by training yourself to take everything you learn in small chunks and then looping them, right, obsessively, and then looping the next one, leaving this alone, and then connecting them. Good, we got two things now. Let's take the next little chunk and, and create a loop out of it. And then you loop that again, and then you connect it to number two. You don't have to go back now, because those are linked. And then gradually you can play it. You take that all the way to mastery. So you have one thing you can play. And you know, after a month, you can play that like, a, like an absolute pro. So when people say, oh, you're playing guitar. Yes, I am. And I can play only one thing. You don't have to tell them that. But you just pull out the guitar and you start playing that. And they say, but you've been playing for four weeks. How can you, how, how is that possible? Well, because you're not doing the same stupid things that everybody else is doing. That's why, right? Sorry to be so, and if you're a teacher and you've been you know, teaching, this might seem a little uncomfortable that I'm saying this, and you know it's right, right? <laughs> because it makes so much sense to do this. That's how the brain works. You need to have a singular focus, and singular and focus is the same thing. There's, you can't have focus on, on more than one thing. That's not the word. The word says one, right? So you need to focus, and you need to loop it, and you need to bring it all the way up, and then combine it, connect it, and I promise you, you'll develop slower in the beginning, or so it will seem. But you'll just be smiling inside, and then once you, that's the last point of this video, once you have taken one thing all the way like this, one riff, one song, one chord progression, then learning the next will be so much easier. And you, bring, you do the same method, you bring that up, and the next, so much easier. And the next, so, until you have so much you know, speed that it seems like you can learn anything. That's what mastery does. That's what this process will do to your development. So use it. And how do you use it? You start using it today. You take something that you, that you know, that you can do well, and then you start chopping it up, and you go from being able to play it to just repeating it a lot more times than you've been repeating it before to get to good. 
Now you just take those two chords of that chord progression and say, I don't want to be, I don't want to feel any insecurity when I go back and forth between these two chords. So you play them until you can play them twice as fast as you need to. Push all the way. Only way to do it. I almost forgot. Uh, go check out the new rhythm guitar program on our website. You can click the link below this video. It's all about taking the overall skill of rhythm guitar and then breaking it up into its sub skills and then targeting the skill you really need to work on in a systematic way. It is the fastest way of mastering rhythm guitar. So go check it out.